see the intensity there? That was intense. Started sweating. I'd be a good fighter. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 63. We'll go with that. Of the Optic Podcast, usual hosts, Jackie, Courage, Don Lizzie, Hector, Hex, and my man, Sugar, Sean O'Malley. This What's place up? is awesome, guys. <laughs> awesome. So we're uh, this this is uh, one of our newest content creators, but he also happens to be a ten and O, right? Still. Yep. Ten and O, mixed martial arts, UFC. Have you ever seen him fight? I've never gotten to watch you live fight because as you're saying you're getting over your injury and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You'll have to, hopefully October 6th will be the next one. Um, it's not for sure yet. I'm kind of dealing with, uh, I have a right hip labrum tear. Um, I think I've actually had it the last two fights, and it's just gotten worse. But you got that from sex. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. Somebody actually texted me the other day and said that. They're like, if you wouldn't have such freaky sex, you wouldn't be hurt all the time. I'm like, yeah. you're right. That's so I did get that Facts. From that. So <laughs> how did you get Just a kick? Roundhouse? Um, I'm not sure exactly. There wasn't like a specific moment. I think it's just like over the last four years I've lived in Phoenix, I've had like 15 fights, and that's a lot of training camps. That's a lot of – because you do about six-week training camps, yeah. and they're pretty intense. Mm -hmm. And I've had about 15 fights. So it's been, it's been intense the last four years, just training wise on my body, and it's, it's finally kind of like, all right, motherfucker, you need to slow down a little bit. Not necessarily How slow old are you? down. I'm 23. 23. Yeah, and I've had like 30 fights, so I've had a lot of fights, put a lot of wear and tear on my body, and I think it finally just uh, got to the point where, because my whole right leg's kind of, you know, I got surgery on my right foot, I tore um, my ligaments and fractured my foot my last fight had surgery was out for it's been five months and then i went and got an mri on my hip because it's mm -hmm. been killing me and they said it's torn so but then they announced that conor mcgregor versus khabib card which will be the biggest fight of all time mm -hmm. like i think it'll be bigger than mayweather um and mcgregor <sighs> you I think, think i think it will <laughs> well, i don't know man. You know how I'm big excited. russia is how many how oh it's true, true, true. is that is that where it is it's in Vegas, but Khabib's okay. like a Russian superstar, like yeah. insane. So that that's gonna be the biggest numbers of all time, and uh, and I have the opportunity to fight on that card. Yeah. So I'm talking to Dana and Sean Shelby, and I told them like I do want to fight on that card, um, but I do have this tear. But they were saying I can get um, steroid shots into my hip, so I got some big ass needle that which yeah. I'm not looking forward to. Um, so I might do that, and it'll help me be able to train for the fight, and then get surgery after the fight. Which I really would like to do. Um, I see a hip specialist um, when I get back to Phoenix, and we're gonna figure out which way I should go. Cause I also want to, you know, take the right, make the right decision for the long, like yeah. for the rest of my career and be able to be healthy. Yeah. But the way they're kind of explaining, it, it's like it's torn already. Whether you get surgery right now and or fix after, it, yeah, of course. Or if get it after and fix it. It's gonna be fixed. Mm -hmm. So if you can tough through it. I would tough. Uh, listen, me, I would do it. Oh, absolutely. Personally. I'm just hearing all these absolutely. injury things of like. Yeah, I got a little bit of a hand cramp from how much I, I, I was playing Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> I will, the, your, the, you know, the, the broken foot and all that. Like I, I've I've gone through gout, so I know what you're what you're what you're feeling. The <laughs> 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 so worst. Um, the worst. All right, so if if you do, how like you don't have to make it public, but if you do, you have to let us know because I'm I'm oh, one thousand yeah. percent taking the Rangers private jet, packing it with, with the content creators, and we're heading down. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. You guys will be the first to know. I'll let hell you yeah. That. Please, please do. Dude. They, I, I'll obviously be sitting closer to the, to the ring. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be outside. He'll be, he'll be close. He'll be, he'll be in the ring. Uh, yes. No bad seats. Yeah. At T-Mobile Arena, I fought there last time. There's no yeah. bad seats. That's awesome. That's crazy. I've been watching UFC since I was 13 years old. Uh, well, oh, wow. I'm 38 now. So I watched uh, UFC 1 on, on VHS. And obviously, it's when there was no rules. Um, uh, Shamrock saw him from the beginning. I, I, I saw, I don't, was it Crow Cop? I think it was. You've been watching fighting longer than me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, my my cousin was super into Taekwondo. His name was Jose Hernandez. He's a teacher in, in somewhere in Elgin, I think. But anyway, he's he was like this Taekwondo dude, like black belt, like the whole nine. Uh, and forever and always, we've always been into like fighting and, and watching fights. Um, so for me, the UFC has always like been a thing that I, that's been a part of my life. I, I, the the Ultimate Fighting, um, what is it? Tough, the Ultimate Fighter. Mm -hmm. yep. I watched every single season except for the last two, uh, but it's been such a big part of my life. The UFC that I'm always I was super psyched when we when we when we picked you up because 
very early on, I say three years ago, we sponsored a fighter called Joe Lauzen. You're familiar with Joe? Joe Lauzen? Yeah, yeah, Joe oh, Lauzen. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, we sponsored him uh, twice for two fights, and we didn't do it to promote our brand. We didn't do it to get exposure. Yeah. You know, We did it because the fans were going to get a smile on their face when they saw the OptiGaming logo on the trunks. Um, and we would have continued to do that if you know the Reebok deal didn't come oh. in and, and ruined it for you know not only the fighters, right. from what I hear, not from anyone. I'm just you know research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but we would have continued to do that, and and we were the first to do. Optic Gaming was the first team. That's sweet. Period. Yeah. To sponsor a fighter that was like on a pay per view fight. The the first one we had uh, the logo on his on his right um on his run on the right pant leg, and then then on the last one it was on on his ass. And he told us uh, the first time he said, "Do it on the butt, man. That's that's what gets shown the most." And I'm like, "No, no, we want to hear so when you <laughs> so when you weigh in and all that shit, we'll get those good pictures." And it ended up being that the second time we got like 90 minutes of the optic gaming logo <laughs> in front of everyone. The, <laughs> I think the shorts are somewhere in uh, in storage. I'm gonna take them to my um to my office because that's where they belong because they were given to me. Dude, I wish we could still rock that that logo. That would be so sweet. Yeah, Reebok kind of. Uh, I don't know what. I wonder. I'm curious because I think Reebok deals coming up ending soon ish. Mm-hmm with UFC so I wonder what's gonna what they're gonna do from there I would love to rock the logo I bet and I I bet two things one that Dana and um, and Fertitta already know this but I bet that if they took 10% of the sponsorship sales on your shorts they would probably end up making a little bit if not equal to a little well maybe not now because I don't know, but they've thought about this. If they take ten percent of the of, of the sponsorships, then they, I think that they'll be they'll do good. What what happens there though is that you get to charge a little bit more for that, so you can make up that ten percent right. and you get affected. And the sponsors will gladly pay for that because they understand that it's a you know big brother paying for that. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm of of optic gaming has always been about fighting. Period. We've we we've been in from the beginning, so we've got a chance to pick you up. And I want to go through that because a lot of people were wondering like how how this came to be. Um, we picked up Jack because, um, I'm loud and annoying. <laughs> Is that why? I don't even know why. We I think so. I, no. I think it's something yeah. like that. No, it's well, something. well, Jack, Jack has been a friend of ours from the beginning since he was fat Jack. One of my favorite Jacks. Yeah. If, if you ask me. Still, what about I'm still happy. No, no, he yeah, likes no. Fat Jack more than what this is called. All right, now I'm Skinny Jack. <laughs> yeah, which I don't really. I mean, yeah. looking how at m- myself. No, how much weight did you lose? Uh, uh, from like, from my heaviest, I was like 260. God right now, damn. damn. Right now I'm like 205. Uh, 205. What, 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 what? Uh, how, how heavy are you? I'm about 185. 185. That's what I should be at, but I'm 210. Yeah. <laughs> what are you at? 160. I'm 150. 150. Yeah. Cool, cool. You're a little bit taller, so I gave you yeah. a little bit. Everyone is funny. Every time I see someone, they're like, "Do you're in the UFC? Like, do you actually fight? Yeah. Like, that's happened. That happens everywhere I go. If they ask, like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm in the UFC. Like, oh, you, do you actually like fight? Like, but yeah. wow. honestly, oh, yeah. when I when I when I found out that that you were joining Optic, I was like, I was talking to my parents about it, and I, and I was sending them like pictures and stuff, and I was like, yeah, no, this guy's like a, this guy's a beast, and my dad's like. That's the guy that you like get in a fight with at a bar, and then don't know that he's like he can literally just like kill you with his bare hands. So I was like, yeah, totally. That's fucking funny. In, like, in, totally. Uh, in the Ultimate Fighter, I don't know what season it was, but it was um, uh, Vernon Ver, Vernon um, Vernon Forrest, the guy that looks like a monkey. Yeah, yeah, right. The the other guy that he fought in the end. Um, do you remember? I don't. No, it was like in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, like finale that they both got contracts it was such a oh, sick Stephen Boner. Boner. yeah yeah <laughs> Stephen Bonner. yeah yeah Bonner. Forrest yeah Griffin, okay. and Forrest Griffin yeah. was it Forrest Griffin Forrest and Stephen. that's the one they both that's like the first ultimate fighter finale Stephen right? okay yeah 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 and Forrest Griffin okay yeah what did I say something Forrest or not Forrest yeah, yeah no so yeah so Stephen Griffin yeah anyway so the other dude uh not the not not my dude said in an interview he's like i'm the guy that that goes to a bar they people just want to punch me for some fucking <laughs> you know they they step to me and he does look like a guy that not not that you would want to punch but a smart face. ass a smart ass that that will be like fuck that goes too far and then somebody's like steps to him and yeah, yeah. and then they get fucked up because he's a professional fighter you know and and, yeah. and 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 to me that's always been like you always have to you don't just know especially you nowadays know. Yeah, you just never know oh bro I'm, that is the have you ever been in a fight not like an actual real like since since I would say I become a fully grown adult. No, <laughs> I, I it's just not who I am. I'm I'm 
I feel like most fights that happen in, in just a normal scenario, they're ha- like happening because of people drinking or, or, or in some way. And when I go out and I do drink, I'm the happiest I'm the happiest drunk that there is. I, I say, I, I'm so far away from like trying to ever cause trouble Same. that I'm like, I, I'm just laughing. If, if my friends get into it, I'm like, bro, come on. Like, let's just get out. It's not even worth it. It's That's not even worth I am. it. I'm definitely a lover. Like when I think of fighting, I don't think of it as like the violent act yeah. of fighting. I, I really think of it as like a sport and a strategy game. Like my technique versus your technique, like in my reach, my build versus your body, like your body type. It's, it's all of it's really a, um, a violent game of chess is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Some people don't look at it like that, but I think the way I look at it is a benefit to me. Cause like I ain't trying to get hit in there. Yeah. You can see that I don't. My last fight I didn't get hit. I hurt. Well, I did get hurt. I hurt myself. But yeah. Like I don't. I'm not trying to get in there and get hurt. I'm trying to get in there and take that dude's lights out without getting hit. And I look at it as like a super strategy game. Cause I'm definitely not a fighter. I I feel like I'm more of a lover than a fighter. Yeah. yeah. With the uh, one thing that's always interests me is like how there's a different fighting styles like of what what would you say you are an expert in um i feel like oh my overall game of mixed martial arts is a pretty high level in every aspect there's jujitsu wrestling and striking basically what it comes down to and i feel like i'm a very very high level striker Mm -hmm. like i would go as far as saying i have some of the best striking in the entire ufc um, and I haven't really got to show all of that cause I've only had two fights in the UFC, but like, I know what I can do. Mm-hmm. I've no, like, so if someone hears that, they're like, no, you got to show it. It's like, yeah, I do got to show it. But I, that's what I feel like yeah. I, I am that high level. And then when it comes to jujitsu, um, especially these last two years, like my jujitsu has gotten so much better. I feel like I'm to the point where in a, in my next fight, like I'm not going to be the guy that has bad jujitsu. I'm going to be the guy that don't take him down. He might choke you. Yeah. And then as far as wrestling goes, like I don't have super high level wrestling, but I feel like, you know, my first my debut, I had three takedowns. Um, like, I feel like I have pretty good wrestling. My wrestling defense is getting really good, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what I'm, my main focus is, is not being able to get taken down so I can knock you out. Yeah. But if you do take me down, I'll be able to choke you too. So. Do, you think that there's a le- do you think that there's a level of we'll, – we'll get to video games soon, okay? Maybe. <laughs> but Fortnite, definitely, because he, he plays Fortnite. Fortnite. Do you think that there's a level for fighters specifically? Do you think that there's a level of – of almost urgency to be a either a, like a strike down king and flashy like knockdown guy to really propel your because you can you can live your entire life being the fa- the, the the best rap grappler in the world or the best you know anything and just do that and win 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 matches mm-hmm. every single time but you don't really differentiate yourself until you become like a, a person of interest that people right. just want to be like holy shit yeah i want to see this guy knock somebody out do you feel that sort of pressure yourself well, like where do you where do you find yourself in that how do you find the balance of saying you know what i'm gonna be 10 and 0 doing this or i'm gonna be 10 and 0 doing this right yeah and there's a that's a good question because there's there's guys out there that are good as fuck a super high level that aren't that fun to watch mm-hmm. and they're not gonna get signed right um, I feel like my sh- my style was always like I got into like I started fighting my first fight I was like that was fun I gotta entertain people mm-hmm. yeah. like I didn't that's how what I felt and that's what I still feel is like it's entertainment I go back and watch all of like I, anybody that makes a YouTube highlight video of me I'm watching that shit cause mm-hmm. I enjoy mm-hmm. what I do and yep. I enjoy watching it and like that's that's been my mindset my entire career is like I want to go out there and perform for people watching obviously I want to win it's yeah. like that that's what I'm in it for too but I like to have fun in there and I like to like me and Tim are constantly thinking of um, new 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 things new spinning attacks new things that are gonna be like people haven't seen before like in both my UFC fights I did a three uh, 360 roundhouse kick like j- it's so fast you can't hardly see it I did did stuff people don't do and I that's what that, that's what motivates me is doing stuff that people don't do people can't do mm-hmm. on other high level guys and having that technique work and um really i just look at it as entertainment and i feel like uh i'm gonna be one of the best ever to do it in this it's not just a sport but just like in sports in general i want to yeah. be the best entertainer of all time yeah that's good super key it's, it's the one thing where it's like a lot of the stuff that even you mentioned like uh, that I think of, for example, like as a streamer and online yep. entertainer, I could see like direct correlations to what you're saying. Like, as you mentioned, Fortnite. Yeah, you could be the best at Fortnite, but like, the reason why Ninja becomes Ninja is because he's got that personality with it. Yeah. He knows that to be an, an, an entertainer, be be that unique figure. Um, 
and and, and, the, so, and the flashy shots that he made. and, fl- and fla- yeah. the flashy stuff yeah. and that's you're exactly killing what you're it too though you've been stepping up your game like you I've seen you explode over the yeah. last what couple months I feel yeah like. no it's up. it's it's been nuts man it's been nuts uh I think and I think a large part of it is like knowing your grind critiquing yourself like as you're saying like going back and watching your own stuff like I'll have streams where like today for example I got up earlier than normal I know I'm gonna be a little bit more low energy tonight's probably not gonna be a stream that I look back on and go like that one is the right. my, but I try to put out as entertaining as unique a product as possible because I do want people to I want it to be a thing where it's like and I'm sure you feel the same way as like Sean's got a fight. I need to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack's got a stream. I need to watch because if I miss it, I might miss one of the craziest moments. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. The the thing there and with you specifically is because, well, what I've, you're really good at video games. Period. You're a good entertainer, which just adds fuel to that fire. Um, and when you're, in my opinion, when you have low energy and you don't have that good stream, it only takes one game of you hitting one insane shot and having like 30 smart plays that will always be remembered because yep. people will take that one game in an eight hour session that that people just remember because it was so sick then a guy playing for eight hours and destroying everybody and not having anything one entertaining and two flash and like the idea that like sits in my head always is actually one of my biggest streams ever that really kind of catapulted me back in call of duty black ops 3 i was i wasn't even planning on streaming that night and then i somehow got a party of people together like yo let's play and i wound up having like my biggest sub train ever one of my craziest call of duty clips ever and i was like you never know what could happen. Yeah, and like, for like, 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 for, like, what I think of for UFC, the first time my jaw dropped and what I was going to bring up from a genuine like jaw drop thing was the McGregor-Aldo Whew. fight when like literally there was all that buildup and he just takes that one step back and that one punch and I was like, Fighting what, what just happened? I remember being like, am I in an alternate like <laughs> reality right now? Like what just occurred in front of me? And that was one where it was like, if you tell me, I will like almost forever remember where I was in that moment because of like how absurd that was. And you're telling me if I missed that, I would be the guy on the outside going like, yeah. why didn't I watch that? I feel, I like the fight, sure. I, 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 the, the McGregor one specifically with Aldo where he knocks him out 13 seconds. Like, I was a little bit more like I was expecting a show. You want more of a like I'm him gonna, versus I'm, Diaz. I'm gonna tell you why. Like when they went, like oh, when they like were both bloodied up. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. I I grew up watching you know fighting and boxing was like and being Mexican boxing is like a, a religion. We would always go anytime Mike Tyson fought or anybody Julio Cesar Chavez fought anytime Oscar De La Hoya fought. We would go to to uh, actually my cousin's dad, my uncle Pepe. That's his you know Jose Pepe's nickname. Yeah. We used to go to his garage. And he would have he would be the only one in the family that had pay per view, so we would we would go there and watch the fights. And I got so used to watching Mike Tyson fights and in like the first round, the first thirty <laughs> seconds, oh, yeah. that I kind of had like a flashback to how disappointed I was as a kid, just like seeing this this monstrous beast destroy everything in his path, and been like, man, I wish I, I would get like at least three rounds of that <laughs> or or four rounds of him just destroying this dude. Um, but he was just he couldn't even control his power. Right? He'd, he'd bite down on the on the leather to get closer to the knuckle and then knock that dude out. I f- had the same feeling with with uh, with McGregor. Yeah. And and I was like as as happy as I was because I do like McGregor and I, I I like Aldo. I was really happy for for McGregor because he's entertaining and he's like, you know. And I'm part Irish, like one percent per my saliva. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you're good. I was in PV when uh when it was the canelo versus ggg Mm -hmm. boxing match Mm -hmm. and like during that match when it kind of ended everyone was like dang ggg's like got this like it was kind of over and everyone tie but then and then it came out that it was a tie and like you saw everyone we we were in a big restaurant like everyone was so into it and out of nowhere like everyone in mexico was like (laughs) like they couldn't couldn't believe it it. Everyone, everyone the whole mood of the place was like here it comes and like it became a tie you saw everyone be like all right like let's just Damn. let's just move on it was That's funny like I, I feel like is judges and and the way things are judged like did you have a moment in your career where you were like what the hell was that or as far as just judging or if, like did you feel cheated or did you feel like okay i kind of got well, it's 10 and 0. Oh, I, know, uh, d- d- I feel definitely. like watching some fights yeah it's like there was the demetrius versus henry Tudo fight um on saturday and it was I I kind of thought Henry did win watching it. Um, I, I didn't watch watch it super close because obviously I wasn't judging it. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people thought Demetrius won. But the judging in the UFC is so pathetic. Like it's three com- three people from that commission. I think that honestly probably don't know too much about fighting. They don't 
understand jujitsu. They don't understand how effective a leg kick is versus taking someone down and literally holding them, mm-hmm. squeezing them. Like to me, that's not winning the fight. Like if you take someone down and laying on them, like that's you're not that's boring. That's not entertaining. Nobody wins there. The only person that wins is the fighter. The 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 opponent doesn't win. The spectators don't fuck him, and the UFC doesn't win. Yeah, the UFC doesn't like it either. Like Dana, Dana's a cool, like, he's a cool boss. Yeah, like, he's fucking speaks his mind, and you know he talks shit about some of his fighters even sometimes, which is kind of fucked up. But he's he's real. So well, I don't think it's fucked up at all, ever. Just if, if, the if, only th- the only reason I say that is because it's he's they work for him. So mm-hmm. if he has a champion that he's talking shit about, it's like. You're talking to the audience who's going to buy that. But if you're saying he sucks, yeah. they're not going to want to buy it as much. That's the only kind of re- yeah. see, um, reason I can see that being bad. But mm-hmm. he's real. So what, what if there was like a like a Supreme Court, essentially, of like these people are elevated, like these seven people God, that'd be sweet. judge, judge these idea. pay-per-views, right? And it's like <gasps> they get voted in by the fighters or whatever. And then like, hey, it's a big deal when one guy, you know, even when it what happened in the actual Supreme Court, when one of the seven people was gone, it's a huge who's going to be his replacement, yeah. yada, yada. That um, would be ideal. And it would almost be like a, a, a natural stepping stone for quality fighters who then move on. But I guess, yeah. I, because in, in fighting, like you get, say you're making 20000 to show and 20000 to win, and you fight three rounds in a super close fight, and you thought you won and the judges said you lost, like you lost half your pay. Yeah. That's a big deal to a lot of people. A lot of people have families and bills they got to pay. Everyone does. Of course. So it's, you know, it sucks seeing that. Yeah, that is. That's always been something that's super interesting for me because games that I've always watched, for example, I mean, yes, there's refereeing and like or umpires in baseball that can swing things, but like at the end of the day, like most of them just end with a pretty right. linear. Oh, this team scored more than this team. But when it's like when it comes down to those fights, like it's so nuts. When I watched boxing, for example, and they were like, "Here's where I think this is scored," you know, one eleven to one oh eight or whatever, and 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 like it's just someone's pure opinion, and then like it'll go to the end, and you're like. This person just had a complete. It's like they watched a different. Yeah. It's like they didn't even watch the same game. Yeah, it's insane. And that for me is like, there's no, that's just not a thing in video games. For example, yeah, right. It's like you just know Absolutely. if you won or lost. You know. You know, uh, doing what we did in the last seven, ten years in optic, and and you know, my, one of my main, and I always talk about this, and it's repetitive, but one of my main responsibilities, taking on these like young dudes like Nate Shot, Scump, Merck, and all these guys were, was to to make sure that them sacrificing college to focus on, on this passion was going to turn into something that wouldn't necessarily, you know, uh, affect them in the long run in a negative, in a negative way. So, you know, for example, you give up college and I'm anti-college, uh, but, but, <laughs> but if you, if you don't go to college and you, you don't get a degree, you may not get a good job, et cetera, et cetera. So when you forego that to play video games, my main deal was like, I need to teach them how to make money, whether or not they win a game. So when you just brought up that some of the fighters, you know, who have families and that like lose half their paycheck, I, I often, you know, go back into my into my mentor sort of like role and say, like you, for example, you're about to start a podcast. That to me is like super smart. You play video games and you can stream and you have an audience. That to me is super smart because you have your side hustle. Sometimes your hot side hustles end up being like your biggest source of revenue. Uh, Jack, for example, used to be a caster. He's making more money now as an independent content creator. But this is something that he could have always been doing uh, if his contract, I mean, I don't know how it worked for yeah, you, but I mean, but it, w- it would have been something that he could have always been doing and, and have this sort of cushion that you do. So, you know, one, I'm, you know, I commend you for, for being that forward thinking and, and saying, you know what, yeah, I, I love fighting. That's my passion. And, you know, I, I don't see it as a violent thing. I see it more as a, as a, spo- as a true sport st- mm-hmm. from the strategy to the, to the passion to the whole nine. But... Just in case, you know, I'm injured right now. What I'm not gonna fucking sit around and not do shit. Right. Like, yeah, I can hit the treadmill and I can do my push-ups, but what what's helping my future me like be more stable and, and, and established? So, do you have a name for the podcast yet, or? Yeah, it's uh, the Timbo and Sugar Show. It's uh, we have four episodes in. Um, nice. we're, we're trying to do one every week. Where, where can we find them? Um, it's on YouTube, iTunes, Google and Google Play. YouTube, I. YouTube, iTunes, Google Play. Timbo and Sugar Show. Timbo Sugar Show. Yep, yep. T-I-M-B-O. Sh- sugar S- Show. S-U-G-A Show. R. Yep, Sugar Show. Oh, Sugar with an actual. Sugar, yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I was super fortunate because, like, I, I've been playing um, video games since by three years old. Like, I don't, I don't, I remember, like, I've been playing video games my entire life. So it was super, I was uh, um, super into Fortnite, and I was actually playing 
with so some of my buddies and they're like dude you should hit up optic i'm like ah oh, that'd be sweet i didn't because i didn't really think of it as any way i thought of optic like just professional gamers mm-hmm. like i'm like there's no way i'm like nah, i'm not good enough like no. i fucking love gaming but i don't i'm not good enough so shot a couple emails and ended up getting in contact and like i'm like so fortunate and, like it's so sweet to be able to say like i'm, I'm with optic because mm-hmm. it's like f- like it's a dream come true almost you know i'm getting paid to play video games in a way it's fucking yep. so sweet yep and like after my surgery um i was literally playing 40 hours a week like yeah. easily for a solid couple months we saw like, <laughs> I, I follow you and i was only playing fortnite i was addicted to like legitimately addicted i would i would close my eyes and like see like <laughs> i'm jumping out the oh bus. trust me yeah, I, I was I, like I, fuck I, I, you, you're in a bed like thinking of plays that you could have made like oh, games yeah. you've narrowly lost and you're like this is yeah dude because we, we originally met at the pro-am yep and first off that whole day was a whirlwind like because i even being in the video game space that was one of my first events as being like a streamer mm-hmm. and not going to just a cod co- event okay so not only was i meeting people like you and in, in the and the athlete slash celebrity side mm-hmm. but then i was meeting all these other youtubers who at this point already had met each other at previous events so i was like this like Oh my God, so good to meet you, Allie. Oh my God, so good to meet it, yeah. this, this. I'm like, what? I, I, I met so many people that day. And, and then with what happened with getting second, and I, I, I did eliminate Sean in the, in, oh. in the charity game. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I remember that moment, Snipe. Oh, we didn't yeah, ride this uh, uh, Come on out. Uh, but no, it was. Uh, that day was a whirlwind. And to experience, I mean, that was probably your first real experience in like was. a gaming event. That was. Anyone that participated in that was like, that was the craziest thing ever. Any other event like that you attend will not match what what the format was. Yeah, I was in like kind of like I was in awe the whole Same. the whole time I got there. I was like, this is fucking so sweet. Like, and then the stand and like I was like into the little arena and like they had us walk out. Some someone was wearing a sugar shirt. I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was Jack. That was a fucking fun event. They where, killed it. Well, we were hanging out. Wait, you you met him at the in the, met, at the bar, right? Yeah, yeah, like at the. Well, no, we met previously oh, yeah, briefly yeah. at the actual mm-hmm. venue itself. And then we, and then we Did started. you see the llama behind the nachos? Yeah, yeah. I have it. Do you? I do. You scored it? I did. Dude, I had dude, to that's pay a good for score. it. Did you? Oh, I buddy. did. But <laughs> the dude, the dude that took <laughs> it, awesome. the dude that took it. Thank you so much for considering selling it to me. And you know, I'm like, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna give you the whole, whole rundown, and I've told it a whole bunch of times. I, I saw one online on eBay for 400 bucks. I bid a thousand dollars right off the rip because I wanted it pure. I'm like, I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to deal with a bid. Oh, well, I figured. I figured. I figured someone's gonna. <laughs> No, I figure someone's gonna be like 500, 600, yeah. and then I'll get a 650. Yeah. But I, you know, some some dude ended up beating me. What? Okay, paid 12 to 1300 bucks. Okay, had I known, I would have bet 1500. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> or, or something, or I should have put on auto that. But then, yeah. like, how high does it go? Like, I'm, you know, yeah, just, twenty thousand dollar llama. Yeah. 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 There's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's limits. To this. There's only eight of them. So, another dude, I, I saw. I, I just went on Twitter when the guy who was it, the guy that said, "Is like, yeah, we put eight of them for people to grab." Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw it, and he, and then everybody started bragging, and say, "Oh, I stole one! I stole one! I stole one!" My plan the whole night was to steal it. Anyway, <laughs> he actually was. That's not even. That's not even making him. Make it. He was mentioning it so early on, like, like I'm taking that llama. I'm getting yeah. that motherfucker. I already, yeah. I already knew the plan. Anything. Anyway, so I, I hit up one of the guys, and I'm like, "Yo, I'll give you 400." He's like, "He's like, no man, Ninja touched it," and I'm like, "I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm known Ninja for like 10 years." You know, he says, "Halo player," you know, talk to him, and I'm like, you know, "It doesn't have the same value to to me, right, 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 because he touched it, yeah. you know." Um, so I'm like, all right, man, it means some to you, 500 bucks. He's like, nah, man, you gotta do better. I'm like, all right, seven fifty. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you come, if you drive from wherever the fuck you're at to Anaheim and drop it off right now. He's like, fine. Bam, <laughs> he comes, grabs it, sure. boom. And then I'm like, fuck, how do I cancel my bid on the, on this other llama? <laughs> oh, Cause okay. I don't want to be on the hook for 2000 for two llamas anyway. But yeah, I ended up, I ended up cause that's where I met you for the first time. You were across the bar and I was, then I'm like, I'm like, oh. I'm like that's that's him. So I went up to you, said hello. You were with uh, two two chicks. Yeah. One of them, your girlfriend. No. Hey, my man. <laughs> <laughs> no. My I, man. I, I personally, I'm I'm, I'm I'm in a point in my life right now. I'm like, smart. I'm 23. I don't like labels. Like smart. as far as because I I'm talking to a couple girls, but and like I'm pretty open about it. Yeah. Like when I tell them like I don't want to, f- I'm pretty, I don't want to feel like I can't go and do something yeah. with someone else. Yeah. Like I just don't want to feel trapped or stuck in a relationship. Um, so but smart, no, smart man. Yeah, so trust, trust, trust me, you're smart. Maybe someday, but right now I just like I just. You're dude, like, like Jack. Jack is like, no, I a line, bro. He's just like no, no girl. Yeah, no, no exactly. I'm like Jack. They, don't they can hit be them. Dis- they can no. they can be very big distractions. But uh, Danny, the one 
I dated her for three years and we broke up. Now we're kind of in a point where we're like, okay, we're talking, but you yeah, can yeah. do what you want and I'm going to do what I want. She's a, like a huge part of my f- whole career though. Like as yeah. far as supporting, how eating, supporting, yeah. stretching, physical therapy, like everything. She's like, su- she's cool as fuck. So super cool. Yeah. I mean, when you find someone like that, then the, you know, there's, there's nothing to say, yeah. but I do, I do think that at times, not always, definitely not on anyone on my team. Like some girls are sometimes a distraction. Not anyone on my team right now. No Just one. Just to make that clear. <laughs> Just to make it clear. No one's a pussy's a motherfucker. <laughs> it really is. Right. <laughs> my man. All right. I love it. Uh, I love so, it. So, besides Fortnite, do you play any other games? Have you played any other multiplayers? Um, I was always a huge Call of Duty guy. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. So I'm. I didn't get to play the beta because I've been traveling. I was in LA and now here and yeah. then. Um, but there's another beta on Friday, right? Yep, and weekend two. And I've seen two. you posted. You fucking yep. loved it. I've heard. Uh, a, I've heard a bunch of good stuff about it. It's uh, it, it it is very enjoyable. It's good to be back on a COD that's like fast paced and flashy. It's like, I mean, it's it's, you could just make some nutty plays happen, which Dude, is what I'm it's all excited. about. They, they, I think they had to. They had to match that that the the hype that can happen in Fortnite, and there is there are such flashy plays that could happen in this game. Are you excited about a uh, blackout? Um, that's the battle royale mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am. I'm excited to give it a shot, dude. It's gonna be nuts. Like running. I just hope that it, bro. I, if uh, Vonderhaar has never Vonderhaar. disappointed me except for fucking Black Ops One and Call of Duty Three. And I'll tell you when Black Ops One, he made the whole sniping thing because of uh, what the fuck's that guy's name? JD Twenty Twenty made a comment about sniping and quick scoping, and then Vonderhaar's like saw that they were giving him. Sh- I don't even know if that's if that's true. in my in my head. This is the way it happened. <laughs> you tell us. It's, it's yeah, so but you know, for the rest of the time. After I met him, he's been like never, ever have never disappointed me in like any video games. I played more Black Ops Three than I played the game before that. You know what I'm saying? That's how fun it was for me. So when I got a chance to play it at E3, the Black Ops Four, I was like, "Thank you, we're back." The only thing I don't like is the the reheal. The um, help the 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 manual healing. Like you have to actually like now when you take damage, you have to actually heal yourself. Oh, you don't just. Just but it's it. but honestly, huh. I thought I wasn't gonna like it's it. It's like fucking putting on a yeah, bandage. Yeah. But I thought I wasn't gonna like it. But honestly, with it's it, it's a pretty dope aspect. I've actually I actually really really like the manual healing part. It just it just further levels the skill gap of mm-hmm. like knowing when you have to heal versus yeah, when right. you Meta. when when you, when you could take that extra challenge and play a little bit more bold. Um, hmm. And it changes how the timings are. It's not always like well I'm gonna have to hide or I'm gonna have to do this. You can be like. I'm gonna make it look like like you can decide to heal and I can decide to play ballsy and then challenge and yeah. get you in that window, um, and I like that a lot. It, 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 it's it's just like moments in Fortnite where like you get a guy weak. Okay, well now you're bounce pad at him. You're taking that advantage to launch pad at him. You know, they're 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 both very similar games. And if you hesitate, you'll be punished for it in both the new COD and and in Fortnite stuff. Hmm. I, I didn't get a chance to play it, and when I played it at E3, it was more of a review than actually just sitting there minding my own business, right. playing the game and enjoying it and. Getting to know the game, um, I hear a lot of uh, of what what did Pomach say last night? If you use what, you're a hoe. Yeah, so there's basically just body armor. If yeah, you if use you're body, a, that's yeah, like if the you're Post Malone. Uh, yeah. Post Malone tweeted like, if you use a shotgun, your mom's a hoe, which is like yeah. an old like meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and whoever yeah. threw that piece of paper, <laughs> your, your mom's, mom's a hoe. That, it's so good. That's that teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that shit's funny. Bro, Pomach, when he hit that yesterday, I was crying. Uh, so I saw bro. your. I think you retweeted it or whatever. Yeah. Like, that, it, uh, but basically, yeah, they're, they're, right now, they're, there's different things. But, like, for example, you're so used to grenades and stuns in Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. That's not the main thing in this Call of Duty. Like, it's a part of a thing called equipment. Mm-hmm. You don't unlock grenades to, like, level 43. Damn. So, like, you're used to level one being able yeah, to just yeah. throw grenades in the map. That's not the case in this game. I used to just spawn and launch one. That's exactly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God. In old Call of Duties, you just throw them at the sky, and it seems like every time yeah. they got a kill. Um, but in this one, there's, like, stim shots. So, for example, the healing... When you manually heal, normally it takes like a couple seconds to heal a full. There's this in this game. There's stim shot, which like lets you heal and it goes way quicker back to full HP. So you can make different plays with it. Another one is body armor. So you spawn oh, in okay. and you just have 50 extra health, and and, and and it just feels so cheap because if you remember like old like Juggernaut and stuff mm-hmm. like mm. oh dude dude mm. imagine in like that shit fuck pisses me off like imagine in Fortnite being able to pick up like chest piece plus 50 health, health and you're like. The hell is that about? So you think you they'll know? fix that since it's a beta? I think it's one of the number one complaints. There is oh, a dude. counter to it, which is like these AP rounds, armor piercing rounds. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like Take them both the out. time to kill feels so good without I the agree. body armor. Yes. That there's no reason to ruin how the game feels. With I agreed. Like so it's like we're did hoping. You miss, did you miss wall running? Uh, my first game, I kept wanting yeah. to do a wall run, but after Have a you while. Seen this? But no, no, no. Honestly, without after a while, the way that the movement feels, 
So basically, they made the game 5v5 instead of 6v6, and then they scaled oh, the maps it. down to match that. Damn, hell yeah. And That's the way that the sliding is and the chaining the movement, it still feels like a fast-paced, crazy game, which is... I like how they... I didn't know they did that. That's sweet. Made yeah. the map smaller and 5v5. That's Dude, cool. no, they're, they're always going, so... What's it's your favorite uh, game mode in just Call of Duty? For Call of Duty, like, the, the competitive mode, Hardpoint, is a ton of fun, but... I think if I had to pick one mode to play, it's like Search and Destroy. My dude. And it's just like, you know you're what? Like, you're like, I like Search. Search is my favorite. It has always been my favorite. will always be my favorite. I like playing Search with the with the squad, with the boys. Oh, 100%. Like, if I was by myself, I, I wouldn't no, really want to I mean, play. I'd play like Domination. Call of Duty by yourself is like, you just want to yeah. gouge your eyes out because yeah. you got like little Timmy 27 who can't count to five, like <laughs> oh, carrying know. bomb Fuck. to the corner of the map and dying. Like, no, that's the worst part. Like, we, we always, I mean, that's all, that's all com competition is, is trying to outsmart your opponents. The yeah. crazy moments, like, for me... And one of those things that I do love about those Fortnite moments is like when you're by yourself, you know, you're in a squad game with your team and you're the last one everyone's oh, watching on the team dude. and you're like, let's go, let's go, Jack, let's go, Sean, like clutch this up. <laughs> when you're in a 1v4 in COD and you clutch that, everyone's like, yo! Dude. And then it only amplifies even more than when you're on stream. Right. And that's that's one of the moments right. that I love streaming. Is, oh, yeah. And, and why I think streaming will continue to take over TV. And like, if you could invest any money or, or double down on it somehow. It's streaming. It's 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 the online platform because now, instead of people wanting to be a Disney star, they want to be Ninja or they want to be yeah. this this YouTube Allie. You know, they want to be these people online because like, what is better than just being able to play video games and, and say like that is your yeah that is your job. People watch you do that. I, I still so surreal to me. It's like people want to see that and being able to be like I was there for that moment. People tagging their friends like this is what you missed and I'll see comments on my Instagram videos be like. I was at work. No, like, Dude, yeah. did you watch this live, Steven? Yeah, it was nuts. You had to be there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Some of my favorite messages are when, like, I'm twitching. Someone's like, "I'm watching at work right now." I always like crack up. Yeah, yeah, dude, I, 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 I just I, picture someone like just uh, right. That dude, you're you're like the job. little window <laughs> instead of them watching like TV or whatever, putting golf on. They're yep. throwing your stream up, and I'm always like, "Don't get fired for watching my stream." Yeah. Like, yada yada. Yeah, I do. You remember the 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 PlayStation, the first ever PlayStation Vita that had yeah, the yeah, little yeah. like discs yep. the cds oh yeah yeah i had all of the my favorite movies and i used to take it to oh work. my god and i used to be in the mortgage industry so i had to pay attention to what, what i was doing otherwise what happened happened yeah. um <laughs> and i always used to like play it and sometimes i would just like flip it over and since i was done with what, what what was it the lost podcast is the only podcast i listened to back then um i would just listen listen to like the the dialogue of of, of the entire movie but i remember like thinking oh my god if i had you know twitch or youtube back in the day like I would not be at work. I would have been trying to be that yeah. right. for somebody else. Um, but yeah, you you do. I, that's why I'm always thankful at the fact that I am able to to offer up some sort of relief, whether it's ten minutes on my vlog or an, an hour on this podcast on a people's or a, a person's work week, because some people do need that sort of like distraction where they're working. Otherwise, they they they'll fucking go nuts. I know I was going nuts, and I had to go through to those extents. I mean, I always see you post about quotes and and meant things are that, that would help motivate you slash keep you level-headed keep you in the right mindset you know and i think that i know something else that keeps you in the right mindset marijuana <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. it's, it's one of those things that you know as a, as a streamer i experience like hey you bring me so much joy or my, you know i've been going through a lot and, and stuff like that and i feel like like and you probably speak to this too like just how much it, how key it is for certain things for you. Like some people it's watching my stream. It helps, but like, you've obviously got your things that you go to and keep you in the right, in the right headspace. You know, I yeah. feel like that's so key. Headspace is a sweet app. Actually the meditation app. So that's, that's what I'm talking app. about. Yeah, I can learn so much from you on that stuff. Like, I love that. Yeah. What is it? It's called headspace. Um, it's guided meditation. There's stuff where you can do it. Like when you're stressed at work, going to bed, waking up, there's just a ton of things. Um, but yeah, something Tim and I do is we go in the morning and train and then usually, um, in the middle of the day before our, sh our next session, we go and read and, uh, you know, it's a lot of self-awareness stuff and a lot of, um, things that help me deal with my own emotions, like figure out who I am. It's not even nothing to deal with fighting yeah. or get nothing to do with anything other than learning myself and learning and kind of understanding how powerful the brain is and being able to, and knowing that your subconscious thoughts are so important, like you are what you think you are so it's i'm learning a lot about and, and our podcast is um you know we got a ton of good feedback we were on the rogan podcast got a ton of good feedback saying 
dude, like, you motivate me, you inspire me, like, you, someone messaged him, was like, dude, I was, like, honestly thinking about committing suicide, and, like, I heard you guys talk, and that, that got us fired up, we're like, dude, if we can help people, yep. whether, like, because we start our own podcast, we're getting a couple hundred views or whatever, and, like, that's okay, if we're helping someone, like, dude, that, that, that helps me want to be a better person, and, you know, so it's, and, like, yeah. the fans are everything, like, absolutely, everything. and, and the, the thing there is that with, with the, with, with the loud voice that you have, and when I say loud, I don't mean, you know, as, as, in a space i mean like the reach of your voice right. you almost have this responsibility to be like a certain way um you know especially in this space in the gaming space specifically i mean in, in mma you, you you have a, a way broader you know audience you know from 13 year olds all the way to 38 year olds right. that, that, that have always been passionate about it um so like it's really good that you understand that and you, both of you understand that because it is it is life-changing at times it's life-saving at times um, I was talking to Dr. Disrespect at the I, at the yeah at the IGAs, and he was saying in the e, e- esports industry esports awards. industry awards, yeah, yeah, and he was telling me how like veterans and and people who have been you know down in the dumps have like really like gravitated towards them because they are entertaining and they make them forget about that even if even if it's for like that one hour that they're watching like it helps yep. and and that's that's crazy I've n- I've never really been into, like not into it because I've never tried it but like the guided meditation stuff like I don't man my I, mom my mom does a ton a ton with that like the way know. I kind of see it is like um being able to because if you think about it like we constantly 24 7 have or unless we're sleep and have that voice going on our head yeah um, meditation is just kind of a way to quiet that and then be able to come more conscious and aware of thoughts you have and thought patterns like if you get angry at a certain situation like meditating kind of helped me set, step back and be like, why am I getting mad at that? And how do I change that from happening again and, and reset and start new thought patterns and new to get a different emotions that are the emotions that I want to have instead of getting angry or upset about something. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's helped me a lot. Um, and and this headspace and headspace is the app it's called. Yeah. Not sponsored, but, 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 I was more just <laughs> notioning to everyone out there. Yeah. <laughs> send the email send, send the email but it's like i think it's like i think they have a deal it's like six dollars for a full year and kind of like fuck six dollars for that but it's 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 worth it you know it's, six dollars uh, for the year for the year or yeah. six a month sixty dollars a year oh 60 it, it's a hundred i got it when it's a so hundred five dollars a month yeah it's it's totally so my worth math it. right yes yeah, so okay <laughs> I just take, I couldn't I take another math. one. I just agreed. I'm like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, that 20. sounds it. You could have named any number and that yeah. would have been good. Yep, you're right. Yeah. yeah, it's cool because a lot of people are like, people watch you play video games. I'm like, well, if you think about it, it's kind of like subscribing to Netflix or mm-hmm. or tw- uh, Hulu or whatever you watch. But because people watch, like, I'll get on and I'll have the same dudes met, like on there ready Always. to go. Like, hey, what's up? I'm like, those are those, those are the people the, that. Those are my dudes. Yeah, those are people <laughs> that. Are, that, are, that are, grow your base and make your community what they are you know For my sure. moderators like they're unsung heroes and then the dedicated members of the courageous that are there every day like those are the people that form the community when someone new joins they're the ones that are immediately making friends people that are always talking to my discord dude they are cool what do you that's call your dude. subs Shug subscribers oh that's nice. good <laughs> nice. courageous is like i like it because it's they're now a thing but in the yeah. beginning i was like, eh, I'm so sorry. Nice. like nate has got the nade brigade Ooh, well uh, i think I, he's had like 74 of them yeah the, na- the neighborhood the, that's good <laughs> um but he changed like every I, I mean he streams once every six months so. that's also true <laughs> so he's got to rebrand every single time he's yeah, yeah. M- mine mine are very cleverly known as the hexagons oh that's a good one the hexagons yeah, yeah. I, only do, I only do good ones. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and sombreros <laughs> the hexagons. yeah so what i was thinking of doing is that like anybody that has subscribed to me for a year I send them a, a, uh, a, an Optic Hex Luchador mask. Damn, that's a good idea. That's, that's, that's only kind of half, bro. Good ones. He's only he's only yeah. good ideas. Just ask him. Just yeah. ask him. <laughs> I, think I've, I think I've been – my highest is five months in a row. I think that's how long I've been, like, streaming, five months. Yeah, as my, uh, we, I just had my first 30-month subscribers and, like, Damn. seeing that three. Like, you that's get to a point where when you hit 30 sweet. months, it's two and a half years. Quarter of a decade that people have been like, you've been a part of my life. Like, I've, I've wanted to support you. It's like an actual investment at that point. Like that's that financially, it's over a hundred dollars that they've now spent yeah. on just watching me. And those people, I'm like, holy. So if somebody God. reaches like five years, you have to give them like half your earnings. For I think that's year. how it works. That's yeah. how it works. Bro, there are some streamers that contract. I see with like seventy months, and I'm like, bro, Hutch has one that's like four years. Yeah, that's I'm, so sweet. I'm literally looking at shout it, out like, to that dude, yeah. right? four-year subscriber, whoever yeah. you are. And and, <laughs> and and there will be you you will have people like that, and 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 and, and it gets to a point where you're like, man, you know. 
I'm having fun with this. They're the people that you switch from your main game to a different game. They're watching you. They're, they're, they're the people that everyone in the world is live, but they still want to be there for your stream. That's sweet. And it's like, okay, those are the people that I'm like, hell yeah, they're yeah. they are the dedicated. Yeah. You, you, you want to change your game right now? Check this out. This is what I if if, if I was managing you, if you were at the at, at the scuff house, okay, and I got to the house and you were sleeping, wake you up, and one of my talks with you would be like, you know what you need to be doing is you already got the podcast going, you already got the streaming for the gaming. Have you thought about training, like just basic shit? Obviously, not giving up your plan for whatever you're doing, but like training in terms of you know, just online classes for what you're doing. It's just like a coach. Like, um, I'll give you an example. Flames sort of a super fit dude on our team, as you know. Super fit. One of the things I told him that he should do is that every morning he should put out a, a tweet and says, meet me at this park. We're going to go do a training session. Now you have a gang of like 15 kids and 15 grown adults that, that will show up there and they're going to go on the run with you for the for the one mile and then they're going to do the push-up sit-ups, right. whatever it is that you do. Um, that's the game changer that would have done – Tremendous work for him, but obviously he's busy. And but the, you know, it's a. Have you thought about doing that, something? That, like that is an awesome idea. Um, like with my, I think the reason I've got so good because when I moved to the lab and moved to Phoenix, I literally didn't know how to wrestle, and and not knowing how to wrestle in MMA is mm -hmm. huge. If you don't know how to wrestle, you're fucked. Yeah. Like my jujitsu wasn't very good, and I think the reason I got so you're good, so long too that it just like fits you like. Yeah. It and it's there's pros and cons to every body style yeah. um but the reason i think i got so good is because i trained i was going to the gym twice a day every day consistently and i was working hard and uh it's hard to put more into your schedule when you have a schedule that works for you i'm like okay i'm training like on a monday we'll go to we'll do jujitsu um from nine to ten go to the coffee shop from like 10 to 11 and then jujitsu like hard competition rolls from 11 to noon and then we'll hit mitts from five to six, and then do jujitsu again from six to seven. It's like that's a full day of training hard. It's like hard to add. And that's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday mm -hmm. thing. It's like super hard to add a, even an extra. I would love to get into yoga and, and kind of do that more, but it's hard. Your body's burnt, or broke down. It's like fuck, I can't do much more. It's and that's what's so sweet about streaming. It's like I can stream though. Mm -hmm. Like I'm good to I'm good to sit here and that's a perfect game. like counter activity. It too. is so. But that that's a good idea, and like lately, I like I still haven't really been able to run with my foot surgery and now my hip. So it's these last um, five six months have been super weird with training, just because I haven't been able to do what I usually do. But I ha when you mentioned hand cramps, that's a real thing. Have you would, have you Bro, really this, got hand cramps? Well, I have. My thing was so now I went from playing on keyboard and mouse this whole this last six months mm -hmm. almost exclusively for Fortnite to then playing COD on PlayStation this weekend. So my hands are now like this. And I'm doing like I could feel it mainly in, like my right thumb, my aiming thumb, Dude. because I went from that thumb just doing this like on the mouse right. to then now doing being like that on the aimer. And when I say one, I played a ton this weekend. Two, <laughs> if you played the Black Ops Four beta, it's like you're, you're you and everyone else in the game is just always on crack because of how fast everyone's That's moving, doing stuff. Yeah, I like so it too. For that. So like when I, when I ended this weekend, I, I got to a point where I finished my stream and I instinctively just like went like and did like one of these and was like trying to get a feel oh, for, yeah. like I'm just like moving it around I'm like what the hell and like that's another thing that I'm, I'm struggling right now with my voice and I, I have to go to a doctor for it but I've been streaming so much and yelling that like even now my voice you have is to still, relax your throat Jack it's still a little <laughs> crackly <laughs> it's struggling it's it's been it's been the struggle because I'm, I'm trying to be high energy when I stream yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the things that I know Ooh. I have well is welcome to the courageous thank you so much for being here hey let's go let's yeah, try yeah. to always do that I'm not one of those streamers that's like you know, and it works for Shroud. He's one of the biggest streamers on Twitch for that low mellow, but that's not what my audience and who right. I am is. Yeah. Well, he's you great ever, at every game though too. Yeah. That also helps. Do you ever have a problem with your eyes? Um, thankfully no. no, but at the same time, I feel like my eyes are gonna slowly deteriorate. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, I'm. I know I'm gonna be like. I don't know, because it's you're exercising it. If anything else, like I, you're I focusing like in, focusing out. I just feel like my my, my 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 uh, my my medium to long range vision I feel like has gotten weaker I feel like that ha after my surgery I'm like because I, th I thought I had pretty good eyes and I started catching myself on some blurry things but there's um, glasses you can wear to, for sh to look at the screens I got a pair oh like you the, look like yeah. a like fucking gunners? dork but oh yeah what are they called blu-ray Blue light, blue light blockers. Blue, yeah. The blue blockers. Blue blockers. No, yeah. but I guess really? they're, they're, they're really back? good for your eyes. So I'm, I, I was throwing them on every once in a while. If I stream for over a couple of hours, I'll throw them on. But because I just think longevity, like I'm like fuck. Oh, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm, a, I'm accepting that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like 75, 80. Well, actually, by the time we're like that old, they're gonna have technology no to make shit. us live like yeah. 130. 
But I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit like 105 and be like this, like at all times, hunchback, can't see farther than two feet away, Ooh. like still trying to play Fortnite Five on the <laughs> Fortnite five. on the Xbox <laughs> Eight Thousand. Yes, whatever the hell it what is. What about those? Uh, there's because uh, also I I think a big reason my hip kind of got worse after surgery is because I was sitting so long. Um, have you ever thought about standing desk? So or the, they have the bikes. yes they have the bikes that you can yeah fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why in my opinion okay because when when you're standing it would it would benefit and it would take close to maybe three hours of work for you to get comfortable now it like your posture would go from from this well my posture is more like this which is why I have like neck issues sitting this close to the screen well yeah I don't I don't I don't even Dude, know how how close I don't I get to it I, I don't get that close but. You'll see some Call of Duty pro players that, like, when I say the screen is here and this is them, like, they are, this is them and this is where they, this, like, they are that yeah. close. They're, Crimson, they're, re, they're Crimson like, plays pretty close yeah. to it. Rambo okay. used to play all the way back. I back. have to play far back, too. Like, yeah. All, yeah yep. all the way back here. But the reason he said he used to do it is because he needed to keep an eye on what everybody else was doing, which Damn. was what made Rambo Rambo. Smartest place to ever fucking play. Yeah. You know, he um, was, yeah. He anyway. Was it, it's it's nuts how, you know, posture and what I've learned is like, when when people say, oh, you know, I feel like I, when I sit too long, I have like a pain in my neck. Literally, the difference in that happening and not is is a quarter of an inch of where your hands rest, mm -hmm. where your elbows are, because you don't want your if you're if you're too low, right? Let's say your your elbows are down like this. That's putting the strain on your shoulders because oh, yeah. you're like resting too low. If they're too high and you're like this. And they're pinched at all times, like you're doing a trap. Mine is, yeah. But if you have them perfect, wow. where you have it all level, <laughs> right? Like this, for example, is a pretty good height for me. My elbows are rested perfectly. I don't feel any strain on my shoulders, and I'm not going up or down with my wrists. Another thing too to like stop like carpal tunnel and what I learned from like old StarCraft pros is, essentially, old StarCraft players used to want to be able to reach the top left corner of their monitor to the bottom right corner of their gaming monitor by without having to move their wrist. And that's what I mean by moving their wrist. Because when you start to do that and you're swiping, Ooh. you're then feeling the, the strain in your wrist. So like instead when I would, when, and I always have played on a higher sensitivity because of it, but like when I move and I'm like this, I'm, I'm, I'm barely going anywhere. I'm doing like that when I'm, when I'm moving, right. when I'm not gaming, I'm like, I'm barely moving my wrist. Um, and that's why I feel like I've never really had wrist issues. Even with all the – I've never really had wrist pain. Even with all the love making to myself. <laughs> I've never – Well, that one time. Okay, come on. There's the other. Ambidextrous. Oh, you got to have a backup. Uh, yeah. On the on – the, going back to the to the other ways of, of relaxation to you, you're, you, you always post, you know, s you know post, post – you always post stories of you smoking marijuana. Um, we've talked about marijuana before, you and I, I – as an athlete, and I'm talking about not just an like an athlete, super athlete, because you're fit, you're physically being, you, you you're using your entire body, mm -hmm. okay? Where golfers only, you know, right. whatever, uh, NASCAR drivers only, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? Does that? How do you feel? Does it affect you in any way? Do you sometimes after smoking can't go running? You can't like have right. you practiced high? Um, I have practiced high. Um, but I prefer smoke like smoking or eating an edible at night after all my shit's done mm -hmm. me person everyone's totally different yeah. like i personally if i smoked right now i would not want to train later i'd just be kind of like chilling yeah. for the most part like maybe I'd, after my high comes out i'd want to train later but like when i'm high i don't really want i'm like it's i use it more as like okay that was a good ass day i'm pumped to go home get high eat dinner mm -hmm. like hang out with my dogs like, yeah that's what i enjoy about marijuana um I think Have it's you ever smoked marijuana, Jack? No. Ever. Never. 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 Not even life. in high school. No. At a party. I didn't smoke until I was 19. I, my dad's a detective back home in Montana, yeah. and I grew up thinking it was horrible. Yeah, like, same. I was scared of it. Like, legit, like, people would smoke. I'd be awake. I'd be like, I'm not part of that. Um, until I finally um, tried it, and I'm like, what the fuck? That's what, that's what it does? Um, I, and he said that in his head, but it sounded like out loud. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, I, at night, and, you know, w uh, rough – my training days are usually pretty rough on the body, sore. Um, I just got an eye, a cold plunge in my house and a sauna. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. I'm pumped. To, that's going to help with recovery. But um, marijuana is the number. Like, it helps me sleep, helps me, you know, eat a bigger dinner sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, because you burn a lot of calories. Like, yeah. I need to eat a fuck ton of calories. Yeah, and sometimes I'm not hungry mm -hmm. enough. 
Um, We're slow metabolism. <laughs> We, but, need, we need the opposite of weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, is there anything out there that makes you not eat? Uh, oh, sure there is. Yeah, coffee. Coffee. Then, so. Let's not go <laughs> down there right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack, there. marijuana becomes illegal in the world and celebrated. Not just legal. No, it's not just legalized, Wait. but celebrated. Yeah, yeah. Would you smoke? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what it is for me is, I, I mean, I didn't drink until I was 21 either. Same. So it was one of those things where it was like, I, I, I like to always if you know me as a person, I like to always be in control of slash my schedule. I used to have anxiety in situation when I was younger. I think that might've played a part in how I think. But for yeah. example, when I would get lost, I would feel, I would feel when I was young, I would think I would never, I was never going to get home. Wait, when, lost. How would you explain that? Like when I was like, when I was like 10 and we got, we got in the car and if we made a wrong turn, that was before you could go on your phone. Yeah. 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 yeah you, I, I grew up in the age with no internet. I'm, I'm just playing <laughs> for the kids out there, you know? Um, <laughs> but I would literally think like, there was one moment when my dad and I were going to Cooperstown. We made a wrong turn, and, and I knew I was looking at the, our, our printout. And I was like, "We've got to hit exit four, uh, like fifty-two B." And out of nowhere, we made a wrong turn, and it said like two C. And I like had a full breakdown. I had to go to like, well, I did like a therapy for like six months to get over that, mm -hmm. and my anxiety went away once I be. And I'm a very realist thinker. My anxiety went away when I got to understanding how more of the world worked. For yeah. example, mm -hmm. no one. I got to a point where I was like thirteen. I was like, wait. When you get lost, everyone finds their way home. And it was like, that fear was just gone. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's an inconvenience. It's not, you're not going to be, I used to be so afraid of planes. I couldn't like eat for two days ahead of it. So like that. And then I got to a point where I was like, wait, there wouldn't be pilots and flight attendants if they were risking their lives every day. On a yeah. You're safer on a flight than you are driving a car. Yeah. And like that, that for me kicked in. I used to not be able to sleep in my friend's houses. And then I was like, wait, they sleep there every night. Why am I afraid to fall? I'm not going to like get kidnapped it's funny the different perspectives you look at it it's like you can literally change if you can change the perspective like if you're not happy it has nothing to do with your surroundings it has everything to do with what like your perspective on life like yeah we're constantly surrounded by good things looking for negative things like that's what anxiety is caused by is living in the future and like oh no like you know what i mean it's just it's the, crazy. the, the wildest shit is like if you lay a, a two by four beam you know two feet off the ground and you have to walk across it without falling you do it, no problem. Put that shit 50 feet in the air. <laughs> Alligators the same, under. Yeah, the, t the same task becomes almost impossible to yeah. me. Um, I, was, I was in high school. I didn't drink or smoke or do anything all through high school because I, I thought I, I, was a lame, I was lame. And I used to be like, I'm too good for stuff like that. I don't need that to be that. So graduation day, middle of the football field, smoked my first joint. Good experience. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That's, uh, I didn't. I didn't smoke. I didn't drink till I was 21 either. Um, I'm d also more of a fan of marijuana than alcohol too, just because. Uh, like, if you listen to neuroscientists and very, very intelligent people talk about what alcohol does to your body, mm -hmm. like for me, I'm like, I don't really want to feel like that. Like, I don't want to. It's an anti or it's a depressant. It's like all these things. I'm like, well. Kind of try to stay away from poisoning the body. Oh, rather, every, there's a reason why every time you're done drinking, the next day you're like I'm never drinking again. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then the next time it comes up, you're like, like can, fuck I mean, it, let's get up and play drink. <laughs> not, <laughs> me. Turn up. <laughs> not, not me. I've gotten to the point to where a hangover will put me out of commission for an entire week. Yeah, no shit. Same. Yeah, yeah I'm, that's how I feel. Like, uh, I'm like fuck. I went to it. a wedding just recently, and it's the first time that I went back to Chicago. And the Friday, which was this past Friday, the wedding was on Saturday. On Friday, I got fucking oh, hammered. No. Oh, God. So I went to the wedding, like, a little bit hungover, but didn't drink at all the whole wedding. I was just enjoying watching my friends. just like, you know, beautiful ceremony the mm -hmm. whole night. So it was, uh, it was pr pretty Is good. Is that what's going to happen at, at Ryan's? At Fuiz, at no, I'm not, I'm not drinking for the next three weeks until his wedding. What about when we do the whole champs uh, flight the next day and there's another champs, hopeful champs celebration? Oh, then to... I still wouldn't drink. No. I, I just don't drink. I, I don't drink a day before I travel. Period. That's I, a good I, idea. I've just I've just flown hungover so many times that I just well let me replace that. I've flown hungover twice in my life, on purpose because the first one, I I said I would never do it again. The second one I had to. <laughs> there was no other option but yeah. I had to, and it was it was a worse hangover than the first one. So I would totally rather just you know if it was legal in Texas smoke marijuana than to do. Right. Flying sucks in general. I couldn't imagine flying hungover. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the worst, bro. It's oh, even man. in first class. I bet. It's just, just you're just sitting there. You want to puke, but you don't know if it's puke. 
or <laughs> you're just like literally like don't you, you, everyone's looking at you you feel like shit everybody's like oh my god look at that alcoholic when you're not you drink once a month <laughs> see I, ca- I care more about I always sit in the aisle so, but I care more about getting to the plane I struggle a lot in cars when I'm f- not feeling well so when I wake up and I'm hungover and I'm feeling a little nauseous once I make it in the Uber to the airport I'm like I'm fine but if I have a 30 minute Uber if there's ever been a time I've gotten sick mm-hmm. it's literally been on the like I, I've had to pull I've literally been to an Uber like I feel sick right now. Can you pull over? And I've just thrown up on the side of the highway. Okay. Yeah. I think because of the fear of flying, or just not no, no. Fear, from 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 I get I'll, I'll get like the motion sickness oh, okay. will kick in. I'll be like, this doesn't Ooh. feel good. Yeah. Have you ever smoked cigarettes? I have not. Me either. Never. Neither. Not once. Not one. I yeah. don't know. Never. I know. Yeah. I couldn't see myself doing it. Not even to just try it. Me either. Judith quit in two thousand and one when she was twenty. When she was twenty, she quit smoking. Uh, my dad smoked until he was, I don't know, until my sister was born so like i nothing nothing bad there or, or anything but i had such a strict parent my dad was fu- like not abusive but he was very a, 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 disip, a disciplinary he was just like very very strict with me because he knew the type of fucking brain that was in this incredible mm-hmm. body <laughs> and he just wanted to like manage my, my thing so my the fear of not of not breaking the rules in terms of smoking or or drinking or smoking weed was like so high up in my yeah. in my Engraved things in to do I, that that just like pushed everything like uh, like aside. Um, but now with the amount of with the amount of like advancements in non traditional medicine, like with marijuana specifically, I think that it, it's it's gonna get to a point where the politicians are gonna fucking die. You know, the old ones that need to go are gonna fucking go. You know, and and you know we're gonna start using something like marijuana to to replace a lot of the things. I don't. I have. Ne- I haven't taken aspirin in over two years. I haven't taken. The only time I, I've taken medicine in the last five years is when I had my gout thing, and that's because I was drinking and eating too much fucking protein, like a fucking asshole. Ooh. And it hurt. I but I, every single time I took the pill, I was just like, oh my god, like I, what? I'm like, if I. I mean, smoking weed would not have helped that thing. You know, nothing yeah, right. would have, a draining or a replacement yeah. of a foot would have. Um, but it, it was, it was, uh, it's just, we, we've gotten to the point, and I know that we've gotten to that point in, in, in this sort of like YouTube gaming space where marijuana is not even a big deal because you smoke, and, and, and the fans have never been like, oh shit, up to gaming, let yeah. somebody that smokes into right. the thing. So now I'm like, okay, so can more people be more open about that? I'm not just talking about optic people. I'm talking about everybody mm-hmm. across the world to, to be more more open about the fact that they rather smoke weed than take a fucking medicine that, that, that fucking gives you bleeding stool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, uh, I think for, for me it's pretty simple. It's like, as you mentioned it, right? You, you, you have your understanding of when it works best for you yeah. and you don't let it take over. Right. Yeah. Right? It's like, I've seen some of my best friends who like, it, but like for example, back in college, and I'd be like, they they'd started smoking a little bit more, and the next thing you know, it's like, all day. I don't remember the last time I didn't see you high, and you're yeah. like, Jesus Christ, and you can actually tell the difference in like how, as you mentioned, like you don't really want to work out after, you know? Yeah. And then I'm looking at them like, I think that's a very rare spectrum though, because oh, I've, I've grown to- up with people that smoke every single day, and they just they're normal fucking people i think yeah. I, I think it just comes to back to like how you let it and you know, i think kind, it depends kind of when you it. start smoking too because like there's people that start smoking at a young age when they're 13 14 15 16 17 18 all those ages like that's how you're dealing with your emotions is by getting high True. you don't understand you don't really know how to deal with your emotions like and figure it out and but oh i can just get high and like these kind of these feelings go away and that's what like i don't want younger people message me like younger kids oh i'm like dude you're like 17 like you shouldn't be smoking right now realistically your brain's not developed you need to figure out who you are more rather than just getting high not only that but at that age is such a like area or area in time of of development it's like an an era in your time that you're you're emotionally developing you are physically developing mentally developing so like these are such important years that to then to take any sort of external enhancements whether sure. whatever it is it affects it in in in, in the long term i'm no doctor but i've read a couple of things that make sense to me yeah. in, in that regard um so yeah yeah i don't know exercise the, the only the one thing that i would would have loved to do more of in high school and this is something that that anyone that's in high school right now or between the ages of 13 and 21 is force yourself to become an athlete and i'm not saying go play basketball go play anything just be a physical person that could perform athlete duties uh, if needed to because it gets tougher and tougher and tougher and I'll tell you the difference between me trying to lose weight when I was 30 to 33 
to where I am right now, it's a fucking incredible, incredible feat. So focus on the, on the yeah. Music. And a lot of people that know me, um, outside of just gaming, but like follow my social media, stuff, know that I try to eat pretty clean super healthy um and that's like a huge thing it's hard to just go to the gym without getting your diet under control um first because that's how injuries occur or not learning how to stretch properly or cool down properly so if you're just like fucking i'm gonna go to the gym today i'm just gonna make it happen and you go in there have a fucking mount monster go to the gym and jump on the treadmill for 20 minutes and then get off and then go shower and head out like that's how you get injured your body's not running on good fuel you're not warmed up. You're not stretched out after. It's like that's how you get injured, and that just causes – and you might not get injured the next day, but it's not good for your body. And over the years, like that's where real injuries occur. Yep. All right. Well, before we go, I got one more thing to say, and then I have a gift for you. Hell yeah. Um, it's not, it's not a car, it's, 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 <laughs> but, it, but it's nice. Uh, you know, on, on the same side, you know, I was looking at your tattoos, and you have tattoos on your on your hands, and you have tattoo, you have a tattoo on your on your cheekbone. Um, you know, the, these are all things that, as I'm saying, like politicians and old corporate people are just going to fucking die and then there's going to be, because it doesn't matter, right? Appearance has nothing to do with what's inside and, you know, mm -hmm. we can say it's what's inside that matters. But appearances mean a lot. We talked about it earlier with you. Like, nobody would see you and say, I'm going to get my fucking ass right. if I push them or if I put them, if I, because you love, you don't, you don't avoid conflict at all times because you're, you're a fucking lethal machine, right. you know? So, the same thing goes with like tattoos for the longest time. I was always afraid that like I'll say up until the time I was 26, I was afraid that if I got any sort of tattoos, I wouldn't be employed by my corporate overlords. Right. You know, nowadays I've, I've met bankers. I've met uh, doctors and psych, you know, not psychiatrists, but you know what I'm saying? Like I've done that right. That all have like hand tattoos, neck tattoos that have been like, that has nothing to do with the, the, the job that they're performing. Um, Anyway, I don't know why I said that. It's just yeah, a really I think, good. I think uh, it's kind of because nowadays you see all these young rappers getting crazy ass face tattoos. Like those, those are the type of people that kids are looking up to nowadays. And like, it's not those aren't good role models. Like, so I, and I'm I'm all about being free and being who you are and yeah. doing whatever you want. But like these rappers nowadays, just rapping about money, women, drugs. Like, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why they're role models. What, what you said partly, but 99 percent of the reasons why rappers nowadays, some of them are bad role models and i just heard this because the, the guy that got married my best friend that got married his son is 13 and i'm like what rappers are you listening to nowadays and then he said um juice world and then i'm like i'm like holy shit like in the past and i'm not saying that one is better than the other because they're both i think bad you know rappers you people my age grew up listening to rappers and talk about killing and mm -hmm. and like you know fighting and all that shit and that's bad and those are the sort of role models that we grew up with but now it's just as bad because they're growing up. This dude, Juice World, said that he takes prescription drugs to like numb the pain away. Yeah. Like you're literally saying this to millions of people that are listening to impressionable young kids. To say, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying rap's better than this. They're both bad, right? Violence and drive bys and all that shit. You know, Pac, Biggie, and an endless amount of rappers have died from from mm -hmm. from murder. Um, and then, but now you have like these dudes overdosing. That's the new thing. Back in the day, it used to be drive-bys right. and, and, and getting killed that way in violent, violent crimes. Now it's you killing yourself off of drugs, and the fact that you get to sing about that, and and again, not glorifying either way, either or one yeah. of them. It's just the same thing. Taking yeah. drugs is like the ultimate. I just buy V bucks. You just <laughs> buy V bucks. That's my. All right, cool. Uh, so <laughs> I got you. So my friend, the guy that that painted that, his name is Omens. He, uh, one, one of his partners started a, a, a company called Blunt God and uh, wanted to give you. Dude, there's hell no, there's, yeah. there's no illegal substances. In <laughs> fact, in the back it says some very cleverly put words, but it says um, that they you shouldn't smoke this with marijuana, but it says that they have to say that. But anyway, <laughs> enjoy you. it, brother. Please, you. Please, hey, when, when, are you moving, when are you moving to Texas? I actually yeah. really like Texas. It's been been nice. When, um, when are you guys moving to Texas? Yeah, yeah. I want to. Well, eventually, we're gonna get a compound, have both of our mini houses on there, our gym. Yeah. And uh, it's got to be somewhere where I can have monkeys. So we can't stay in Arizona. <laughs> we can't have monkeys there. Can you have monkeys in Texas? I believe you can. I, th I think you can. I was looking up um, the laws, and I've ever since I was little, I wanted a monkey, and I've always been the type of kid to, or person to 
like I've always wanted a mon- I'm gonna get a monkey someday. Yeah, and you get like what you have, want. Yeah, of and I'd really like to have obviously a good home for it. And uh, Arizona, you're not allowed to have them there, so I've, we gotta look for somewhere they can have them. So Texas well, could be Texas it, could be it. We would love to have you back, man. And please don't let this be the last time that you hop on the podcast. Can't be. This no, was fun. This was, this was a, a lot of fun. All right. Thank you for Thanks, coming guys. out. Jack, it. you're the oh, man. Oh, what? You, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he stole, he stole <laughs> that one. <laughs> I stole the double one. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, guys. If you guys enjoyed the podcast, I know I sure as hell had a good time, um, you know, doing the podcast. Social media stuff and everything, where to find his podcast is going to be listed down in the description down below. And all of our stuff will be there as well. We'll see you on the next one. Do not leave without leaving a like. And that's that. See you later. Hit, hit him with the music. Please. Peace.